Mathematically, we define a graph by a pair of sets, V and E, which are related to each other. So if I start with the set V, it contains potentially a load of single elements, V1, V2, V3, however many of those. And then the set E contains subsets of V, which have either one element of V or two distinct elements of V. Now, we're calling it set V because the elements of it are what we call either the vertices or the nodes of the graph. And the elements in E are the edges. And we can visualize this by thinking of the nodes as being sort of points in the graph and the edges being lines linking those, such that, for example, the edge represented by V1, V2 would join node V1 to node V2. Now, graphs like this we see all the time in everyday life. I mean, this is a map of the Sydney Rail Network, and you can think of the stations as being nodes and the rail line between two nodes that you could travel to directly as being edges. So this mathematically is a graph. So if I've got the set of nodes one, two, three, and four, and the set of edges, which I'm calling E12, E13, E14, E24, and E33, where the subscript means that the, those two corresponding nodes are joined with an edge. So I would visualize this with four dots, one, two, three, and four, and there's five elements in E, so five lines joining these, so five edges. So the fact that I have E14 means we've got a line joining node one and node four. So I could visualize that simple graph of V being one, two, three, four, and E being E12, E13, E14, E24, and E33 uh, via this simple diagram. Although I visualized it that way on the previous slide, there is no unique visualization of this. And particularly when I think of either rotational or mirror symmetry, reflective symmetry, I can draw these well, literally an infinite number of different ways. So if I keep the same V and E from the previous slide, well, I can keep the same visual representation. Or I can mirror it. Or I could sort of flip it over. But I could draw it completely differently, but it's still the same. There is still one joining to two, one joining to four, four joining to two, one joining to three, and three joining to itself. So all four of those graphs are the same. If we have an edge which appears more than once in the same graph, then we would call that a multi-edge and the resulting graph would be a multi-graph. So for example, this one here, which was a similar graph to what we previously saw, except the edge 1, 3 appears twice. 1, 3 is then a multi-edge, making this a multi-graph. Another category that we can have is we can start to, instead of having um, sets containing two elements to define the two ends of an edge, 
we're going to have an ordered pair instead. The difference between a set and an ordered pair is, of course, V1, V2 as an ordered pair is not the same as V2, V1, whereas the set containing V1, V2 is the same as the set containing V2, V1. So in this case, I've got a source node being where the edge starts, and I've got a terminal node being where the edge ends. So if I visualize a directed graph, I also need arrowheads pointing from the source node to the terminal node. For our last couple of definitions, well, we've got a loop, which is probably exactly how you would think it. So in an undirected graph, I only need to define one node because that node will be both the start and the end of the edge. So in which case the subset of V has only got one element rather than two elements in the subset. If it's a directed graph, then that element will appear twice in the ordered pair. It will be both the source node and the terminal node. And then if we've got a graph that has no multi edges and no loops, we refer to that as a simple graph. 